Hey YouTube, it's IC and welcome to the 183rd episode of Best Tech Info and Rumors. And to start off, before we get into the news, I just want to say that in over 180 episodes of recording this series, I've finally changed the format, which is one that I first tested in my most recently uploaded video, aside from this one, of course, and I'll actually discuss that later. But I'm curious to hear your opinion, so let me know what you think about this new style down below in the comments section. Now, first up, I wanted to discuss iOS 7.1, which was released by Apple on Monday, and regrettably, the firmware patches the Evasion 7 untethered jailbreak, a utility that will still successfully jailbreak all iPhone, iPad, or iPod touch models running iOS 7 through 7.0.6. However, an update to 7.1 will unfortunately result in the inability to jailbreak, as the firmware patches a number of vulnerabilities in iOS 7 that are exploited by the Evasion 7 utility. And in last week's episode, I detailed why iOS 7.0.6, Apple's SSL security update, was important, and if you happen to miss the window to restore to 7.0.6, you can still install the SSL update available inside of Cydia. However, as I detailed in last week's episode, the long-term ramifications of the Cydia SSL update have yet to be tested, seeing as it hasn't been available for long enough. So if you're already jailbroken on a pre-7.0.6 firmware, just know that the SSL package may result in unwanted complications in the future, which could even be bad enough to warrant a restore to 7.1, which of course patches the jailbreak. Although if you aren't on 7.0.6, the security update through Cydia is better than nothing, considering the SSL vulnerability poses a real threat. And for more details on how and why iOS 7.0.6 and the SSL update are important, check out last week's episode. Now really quick, I wanted to discuss the future of jailbreaking. Unfortunately, there will not be an untethered jailbreak from the evaders for iOS 7.1. We'll have to wait until Apple releases both iOS 8 and their next round of iDevices, as the evaders, the primary dev team, on the jailbreak scene do not want to burn through exploits that will just be patched by Apple with the release of a new firmware until we actually have iOS 8 and newer devices. However, with that said, there will be a 7.1 jailbreak. It will just be tethered and exclusive to the iPhone 4. And the reason for that is because said jailbreak utility will be based on Windows CM's Open Snow project that utilizes GeoHot's LimeRain exploit from 2010. Now, the jailbreak would also include support for other devices. However, over time, Apple has phased out said A4 based devices with the release of newer firmwares, so of course they've stopped supporting them. But again, the iPhone 4 will definitely be able to be jailbroken via a tethered jailbreak and most likely rage break. I'm just waiting to push out a tutorial for you guys until it's been streamlined and available for both OS X and Windows based computers, so just be sure to stay tuned for that if you're at all interested in a jailbreak for iOS 7.1. And now to break up the Apple news, I want to discuss Tesla, California based electric car manufacturer. And no, I'm not going to review or detail their Model S. In today's video at least. I have a few videos planned that I think you'll really enjoy, but in today's episode I want to discuss some news that I found interesting regarding the company. So for a bit of background, for those who are unfamiliar with Tesla, the current primary car is dubbed the Model S, which is all electric and utilizes lithium ion cells for the battery pack. Now a new report from Bloomberg claims that Tesla, an environmentally friendly company that's dedicated to decreasing transport pollution by way of the electric car, is allegedly contributing to pollution in China. China, while their suppliers obtain graphite for the lithium ion batteries. The article itself is actually called Teslas in California Help Bring Dirty Rain to China. Personally, I don't agree with what's stated in the report, and neither do the majority of individuals who took the liberty of posting comments on said article. In fact, Elon Musk, Tesla's CEO, took to Twitter and said the following, quote, working on a Model S environmental impact blog this weekend to counteract BS like Bloomberg graphite story. Beyond ridiculous. So we should know more on the topic soon. Again, I just wanted to share it with you guys, and of course, just be sure to stay tuned for all of the Tesla coverage that I have planned. Now next, I want to discuss IO. US 8. So Mark Gurman from 9to5Mac, who has an excellent track record for accurately reporting Apple rumors, posted screenshots of what was allegedly an iPhone running an early build of iOS 8 with healthbook preview tips and text edit apps. Now said images were first publicized on a Chinese microblogging site that's notorious for posting images of purported leaked products. Now the icons for the new apps are certainly questionable to say the least. Claimed to be placeholders, it seems odd that Apple would make use of OSSX icons since their departure from detailed icons with iOS 7. Furthermore, as a majority of comments on various blogs who picked up the story have suggested, the images look like and could easily have been photoshopped. And in a follow-up report, German also claims that 
Apple is working on streamlining Notification Center by removing the Miss tab. The article also mentions that Apple is pondering removing Game Center from iOS 8, which is ironic to say the least, considering the supposed leaked screenshots that I just detailed contained a Game Center icon. Furthermore, I've also seen numerous blogs lately pick up various concepts for the iPhone 6, as well as iOS 8, and just know that until Apple officially announces and reveals both, iOS 8 likely being this June at WWDC and the iPhone 6 later this fall, nothing is confirmed and absolutely everything could change. So definitely don't put any stock into concepts that you see because they're just renderings of what certain concept artists hope the iPhone 6 will look like. Moving on, let's talk about free app life. On Thursday, we launched the first fully native iOS app for the service, and users can now earn points and use said points to redeem various prizes such as paid application codes from Apple's App Store, gift cards, and even bigger electronic rewards. So with that said, if you have yet to download free app life or you need some help with installing various applications to earn points, just be sure to check out my recent video. I'll have a link to that and everything else below. And finally, I wanted to talk about two games. The first being Titanfall, which launched exclusively for the Xbox One, 360, and PC earlier on Tuesday. Now, the game itself has so much hype surrounding it that it's unreal, albeit justified. Titanfall brings new and exciting, fast-paced gameplay to an otherwise stale shooter genre. Now, I'm not going to review or give my opinions on Titanfall other to say that it's certainly fun and could easily become addictive. For more on Titanfall, there's a plethora of coverage and reviews online. Now, the second game I want to talk about is an upcoming PS4 exclusive called Infamous Second Son. Now, after spending over two years developing the game, Sucker Punch Studios took to their Facebook page to share the studio's disappointment regarding a number of video leaks that contain spoilers ahead of Infamous's March 21st release date. So if you plan on getting Infamous Second Son, you want to be surprised throughout your entire first playthrough. Don't watch any of the leaked videos that you happen to see online. All right, and that wraps up everything I wanted to discuss in this week's episode. If you liked it and you want a chance to win a $100 Amazon gift card, just be sure to rate it up and leave a relevant comment down below in the comment section. Once your comment's been posted, you'll be automatically entered to win. And if you don't know what to leave in the comment section, try answering the question of the day, which I actually alluded to in the beginning of this episode. Let me know what you think about this new style of filming, again, in the comments section or on Jailbreak Tech Info. And if you guys want to be updated more often, such as when I release new videos and post Jailbreak updates, just be sure to like me on Facebook, follow me on Twitter, add me on one of your circles inside of Google+, and follow me on Instagram at ICUID. And until next time, this is ICU, signing out.